All right, well, good evening. Good to have you all with us here tonight. Those that join us online, we welcome you too. Uh, just a way of announcements uh, with the inclement weather that we're having. Uh, we are um, going to be going along with the school system with our school tomorrow. We'll be, we won't be having school. Uh, so you might see a few less cars here this morning in the morning. Uh, so just keep uh, keep the school and everybody else in prayer in the in the path of this storm that's coming through. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll be blessed. Um, so as, uh, in your newsletter, you got the calendar. Uh, just keep a look at your calendar upcoming events. You got September coming up. Uh, one thing in September that we do look at is uh, we do have uh, the younger kids. Uh, they'll be moving up. Uh, some of them will actually change class classrooms. Uh, some will be in the same class. They'll just, you know, we'll recognize them as moving up. But uh, Sunday morning, if uh, you know you come in, just just be alert for the kids and and just maybe help direct them. Make sure they're going where they need to go. Always an exciting time for some of them to, to move up. Um, so they'll be, uh, again, like changing classrooms. So we'll have some that'll uh, be changing uh, into the youth program as well. So uh, that's exciting uh, to see some of these kids growing up. Uh, we're starting uh, the school year out. We have a couple seniors and um, just real exciting to see see these uh, the children in our church growing up. Uh, some of you adults uh, have made some big steps as well, stepped up to uh, taking some of the roles in the church and uh, blessing uh, that our uh, nursery workers have um, been added to, to help lighten that load. Uh, so just uh, keep up with all those changes and uh, just encourage one another uh, as we enter into a, a new church year uh, come Come Sunday, I guess, is the official start of that, and uh, we just appreciate appreciate all those involved. Uh, just remember Sunday night, just as a little uh, reminder, uh, we'll remind you again Sunday morning, but Sunday night, uh, we will not have Awana, and we will be taking uh, some of the youth out uh, on a back-to-school party, uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so if we have uh, some parents to have younger youth, and we'll try to get a hold of them. Uh, just make sure they're aware. Uh, if they're moving up, they need to talk to me, and we'll let you know all the plans and stuff for that. So, sounds like a lot going on. So we'll just we'll just keep going on. But like I said at the beginning, just uh, be in prayer for these that are in the path of the storm uh, as it comes through. Hopefully, we're not going to get it too too bad. We need the rain, and we're thanking the Lord for it. And uh, just pray that those are already uh, saw the Baptist men already uh, getting things in place to go help. Uh, it's always an exciting thing to watch, and uh, a way to encourage you there. If you don't already know, there there's opportunity to serve with the Baptist men disaster relief at, at all times. So uh, just putting that out there to you. Uh, Joe Walls probably be able to talk to you real well about that. Uh, so talk to him when you see him. But uh, at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll have a, a word of prayer, and we'll get into our Bible study. Father God, we thank you for our day. We thank you uh, for getting us through uh, the days, and we just pray, Lord, as we're in the evening hours, God, that you would just uh, help us to be focused on what you would have us to focus on from your word tonight. Lord, we pray for the uh, mission groups that are meeting, Lord, and we just pray that as they open your word, Lord, as they look at missionaries around the world, Lord, as they as they learn of uh, how to serve, uh, we just pray you just to be with them and, uh, and guide them, guide their leaders. Lord, uh, as we open your word tonight, Lord, let it be uh, a, a refreshing reminder to us on how good you are and how good you take care of us. Lord, uh, we, we lift up to you um, the different needs in our church and the different goings-on, Lord, and we just pray that 
we'll be ever mindful of you. And Lord, that we would uh, guard our hearts and our mouths. And Lord, to, to speak things that are pleasing and uplifting to you and encouraging to others. And we just, uh, we thank you, Lord, that you, you guide us in that and help us to hear you. Lord, uh, thank you again for our time together. And uh, be with us as we go into your word. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so tonight we're going to be out of the book of Psalms. So if you get find your place uh, in Psalm, we're going to go to a very familiar passage, Psalm 23. And usually this is kind of a reserved place uh, for uh, a funeral type setting. Uh, but tonight, I just wanted to look at it as as an encouraging thing for us. Um, uh, David writes uh, from his heart here. I think that's why this, I mean, he always writes from his heart, but I think this came from a special place uh, with him and his relationship with God. Uh, back to, all the way back to his younger, younger times uh, and his uh, duties in, uh, working with uh, uh, the sheep and all that stuff, and just how it, how he grew as a as a person in the Lord, and the Lord guided him and and provided him ways uh, to to be able to to grow. But again, Psalm twenty three is just one of those that we all could probably quote from our heart and be real easy to to do that. But if you will, this let's either quote it or read it. From God's word. So Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I love this passage. I love to, to quote it. I, I learned as... As a young child, many of you could probably attest to this. This, this along with uh, possibly John three sixteen or or the Romans Road or parts of the Romans Road, uh, that this was something another passage that you learned, and and maybe even as a child you thought that was uh, a good, uh, a, a really neat accomplishment uh, because it's a whole chapter, you know. You get those six verses and you got, I memorized a whole chapter in the Bible. I'm able to go home and say that. I know in the school that uh, I went to, of course, we, we always had Bible class. So we were always memorizing scripture. And um, I, I, if we ever had to pick something to read or, or memorize or something, I would always, this was always my go-to. But as, a, as the years go and, and you learn and, and you grow, when you see those words, the Lord is my shepherd, to know that God is not just leading you because, not just leading you because he's God, but he's leading you because he loves you and he wants to build a relationship with you. That's what a shepherd does with his sheep. They, the sheep hears his voice and they what? They listen. They know him. I mean, it is a, it's one of the, the, the teachings from God. And we look at this shepherd, and when you claim that, it's, it's this shepherd, this person, this man that is over you, and you, you listen with all, all intents and purposes. You listen. If you go astray, he'll grab you up, and he'll bring you in. And there's many different methods that that happens. Uh, I remember uh, my parents telling me of uh, the stories in Germany when they would they uh, lived there. It, they at that time they still had shepherds that 
went through towns and everything. They be you'll sit there and drive through town, and in the the median or the turnabout, uh, they would the shepherds be would be crossing and find the grass in there. They would stop the sheep in there, and they would eat. But they would do everything that man said, and if they didn't. Even um, at that time, they still had staffs with them, and they would either tap them and make a sound with them, and they knew that that thing was getting ready to be used, or he would gent- gently lift that staff, and he would just get some of them going. And when they all started following, they understood that, hey, this is what he wants me to do, and, they'll, and they would go and follow. We have a God that is our shepherd, not, not just a mere man. Some, some people get confused that we, we worship Jesus, with, or, or, which is our Savior. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God as the head. And people, I think, get confused that we have all, these, all this love and all this guidance in our life and all the, the assurance of what he's doing to push us forward is something that we can listen to and obey and know without a shadow of a doubt that we could be listening and be obedient to that guidance and we would be forever uh, peaceful and perfect in our life. But it is hard to do that. And one of the things a good shepherd has to do in the way they build relationship with their flock is sometimes they have to go through some hardships. And sometimes, uh, as uh, when I would, would hear these stories, that the shepherd would sometimes have to get uh, their lamb or their sheep that would, that would walk away. They'd break its leg. And then they would put it over its shoulder. And there we get the, the, the picture that we often see of the shepherd with his staff and the, the young lamb or young sheep laid over his shoulders. And it's because he broke its leg. It didn't have a choice. It couldn't run away anymore. It had to stay. And what they did, they got a bond together. They bonded. Uh, the word that we use nowadays, like when you're working with animals or anything, they say you imprinted on the animal. And they, they love you. Uh, those of you that have dogs, those of you that have cats and different things, they, they do imprint on you. And they... They love you, and they want to be around you. Um, that is, uh, I have heard stories about cats where that doesn't work out so great, but dogs are dogs win. No, but you have you have some of those relationships where uh, you have people talking about their pets, and it, and they say it's like I can look at them and and they know what I'm thinking. I can I can do a gesture, and, and they follow. And some are trained to do that, and some are just your pet, and they, they know because they've been around. But w- again, I'm not trying to take us down to that we are pets, but we are God's children who God wants to imprint himself in us, in us and him, and have that, re- that close bond. So even when we need him, we stray and he brings us back, we want to draw close to him. When we're in a good place in our life, we want to draw close, close to him. We learn that in all areas of our life, we want to draw close. We see him as the protector. We see him as the provider. We see him as all these things in our life that we need help and guidance with. And we follow him. And we obey him. It says that we shall not want you know, there's times in our life where we feel like we do want and we need and we have all these requests. And this is not that you'll never be with, you'll never have a time where you're not asking for help or, or things like that. He's just saying the Lord can provide so much and he has so much resources that you're never going to have to be wondering where it's going to come from. Now, you may have a season of doubt. You may have a season of, uh, of, of, of loss and things in your life. But when you're following the shepherd, he will find a way to make, that, to make those provisions possible for you. But sometimes we have to give God time and we have to give him that 
ability to work it out and to, to, to grow that in us so we are watching and, and waiting for that. Sometimes we, we get so impatient we want it now kind of thing. And God grows us into things sometimes, and we have to be aware of that. There are some provisions that are provided immediately and some that we do have to wait for. It says, He makes me a lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Guys, God knows that when we have certain needs in our life, He knows where to take us, whether physically or spiritually, to help us grow. Have you ever had that spot that you like to go to? Like nobody bothers you too much there? You got that spot? Yeah? Now I'm not talking about the throne room. I'm talking about somewhere else. You know, somewhere where you can go. Most of the time we have a spot outside. I know some people have a prayer closet, a prayer room. Uh, we had, uh, the, the there was a movie, I can't remember the name at the moment, The the where... Uh, that the uh, lady had the prayer room in there, and people have taken uh, to that, and it's it's an awesome thing uh, to have that. It's an awesome place to go outside and to have a have a moment with the Lord, uh, to to be able to be at peace. He lie, lying down in these green pastures, knowing that these places where God takes us, whether it's physically or spiritually, he takes us to the places we need to go. These ripe and ready fields that are, that are ready to uh, be used and to be cultivated for his ministry. Uh, things that we think that we are, uh, we are unworthy or we are not ready to work or we're not able to work or do the things of God. If we would just look at what he places before us, there's something to do. There's something to get involved in. Uh, you can't be in church, whether it's a large church or, or to a, a small country church, you can't sit there and, and say, there's nothing for me to do. There's always something. And it may not be something the church body is providing, but it may be something God's laid on your heart. And then that, in turn, being obedient to the shepherd, you're going to be providing that. But you need to find out what these green pastures are made of. Instead of just looking, let's go into them and be able to see, be able to be beside the still waters, to feel the restoring of the soul. There are so many times when our, when our hearts and, and our, our lives are, are, are broken down to the core, and sometimes it's, we feel like our relationship with God may be ripped apart or maybe be be spread where there's distance now. Well, the only way for you to get to a place where you feel like you're distance with God is that sin has entered into that, that gap. Sin has been allowed to be part of your life again. Sin has become something that you start to enjoy and start and stop listening to the leading of God into the leading of the Holy Spirit that tries to warn you of those dangers. But just know that He'll restore you. Yeah. I think that you're talking about stillness. Mm. I mean, this world is, is anything but still and anything but quiet. I mean, you have TV and you have your phones and it's hard to, you have to consciously take time to, to be still before God and, and to be quiet and get away from everything. I mean, just like Elijah, I mean, he didn't speak in the whirlwind and, the, and he st spoke in a still, small voice. Yeah. And, and it's, the word says, be still and know that I am God. And it's difficult mm -hmm. to be still and quiet in this day and time. And, and that is very true. And with everything that makes life so busy, it's hard to put it down. It will almost feel lost uh, putting things down. But I make it a, I make it a point. Um, the storm kind of reminds me of, of this, as you, as you mentioned that. There is a, there's a particular place that I go to often. And sometimes when a storm comes up, I love to go to this place. Because I have a, I have a swing there, and I can sit on my swing... And it's positioned 
where when a storm comes in, it's coming on the left, and you more, more than likely you can watch that thing go across the sky. I, I used to do that by myself. I used to like that, you know. But then my daughter found out, and she liked to join me. But the thing that we hold in common is that we're okay with just sitting and being quiet with each other. And even with the cell phones and the TVs and all that stuff, it's kind of a thing. Uh, she knows when I go out there that she could come and sit right beside me, and it's okay. See, we need to find these places where God has given us. There, there's places of ministry, and there's places of, you could say, relaxation, but not in the, in the sense that we just forget life and forget everything and go, but we can, we can relax, kind of akin to sanctuary, where we go in that sanctuary and we should be protected and feel like we can uh, let God speak to us, but we should have a place where we know we can go and, and relax and, and let go of some of this busyness. And even if it's for a moment, you know, some people we, we try to do a long period, long stretches at a time right off. You know, we get convicted of not spending enough time with God. So now I got to read five, five books of the Bible in one night. I, I got I to gotta pray for two hours. You know, you get stressed just thinking about doing all that. And then you're like, I don't understand to do it. And instead of this being a peaceful guidance by the shepherd, we add this as part of our busyness instead of being quiet. This scripture, God's word, will lead you to the right places in your life. He says, in the bottom of the verse 3, he says, He leads me in the paths of righteousness, his righteousness, for his name's sake. Not, he, he doesn't lead me in the path of righteousness for all this other reason, but for his name's sake. I'm going to lead you the right way in the right place at the right time, and that's my way. Remember that. Follow me. That's not easy to do. But just think, this is, this is a way of helping us and relaxing us and reminding us so much how good God is to us. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We just jump right into the severity of life right here, right? I feel... <clears throat> Like I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel like I'm walking through the most difficult part of my life. I feel like I have lost so much in my life. I have lost this person. I have lost this job. I have lost this finance. I have, I have lost this friend. I have lost this, uh, this whatever. Maybe your drive. Maybe you're, you've lost the connection you felt with God. You just feel at your lowest Maybe it's, you're just dealing with all life's pressures and it just it feels like you're literally in the valley of the shadow of death. Maybe you're dealing with life-threatening things, life illnesses and things like that and feeling that you're in the shadow of death. What, is it, what happens when you're there? What happens to that? What happens when you just read following the shepherd and, and being able to be led and guided by him to the, 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 the fields that are ripe for harvest, the, the waters that will uh, supply my, uh, quench my thirst for other things and be able to be satisfied in God and be able to restore my soul. And then I, I find myself, well, I'm still broken. I'm in the valley. But he says, look here, you're going to be there. And if you're being led by God, if you're allowing God to, to, to put you in a place where you can just soak him in, he says, I will fear no evil. How wonderful to be able to claim that in your life. I will fear no evil for you are with me. For you are with me. Not, not because I got you, 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 and you with me. Because I got God with me. Guiding, protecting, answering prayer, providing that. He has his rod and his staff, and they comfort me. Normally, when we see an authority figure, maybe a parent, you know, go back in your mind on this, if they got a rod or staff, kind of, you know, just kind of use your imagination on that, 
usually if they got something in their hand that is similar to that, there's some guiding and correction going on or coming. You know, the old let go get the switch, you know, kind of thing. But here God is doing that. His rod and his staff is sitting here, not in a way to like as a switch, but it is a way that that rod is saying, I'm the one you follow. That rod is also shaped and made that when you get out of line, I can, I can get you. You're not getting too far. If you're out of my hand reach, that rod will go and it'll get you. He's prepared himself. He's, he's ready for that. And when we see how ready he is to help us and save us and pull us out of any situation, help us to be able to give us that strength to, to push on through, and not fear evil and everything because we see him as that authority. We see him with that rod and that staff. Instead of it being something scary or something that, oh no, he's, it's gonna, it comforts us. To be comforted by God. God is not scary. Sometimes we, we, we paint God and it's, it's all of this scary thing. And I, I hear uh, things... Uh, uh, about God that people are uh, all these rules all these regulations if all this and you don't do that you're you're this person if you don't do that you're that person and and they miscommunicate the word of God and, and instead of us having a reverent fear for God people get a bad taste for God and they're just afraid to hear whatever they have to say because it's like well I could I could never live up to those standards I could never do that kind of thing or it's, it's, it's so far out of whack that they sit there and they're like, well, I don't even want to listen to that because I don't think I'm that bad or I don't think life is, should, should be that hard to follow all these things. Let me just be me and I should be fine. No, we need guidance in our life. That's why when we see the shepherd, we should feel comforted that he's there and willing and ready to discipline, to guide us, to push us, to get us out uh, of, of ourselves and be able to set us back on the right path. We should love our God for doing that. And then we go into what he prepares for us. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. Boy, what a blessing to sit there and to be the one that gets doted on by God. I always love that word, doted, by the way. But just think about that. You're in the presence of enemies. You're in the presence of sin. You're in the presence of the wrong kind of fear, you're in the presence of uneasiness in your life, you're in the presence of the valley of the shadow of death, and that's all you're looking at, you're not looking at the other side. Think about what God does for you. He takes you in that moment, and he blesses you. He'll take you in that moment, and he'll prepare you. He'll put the, all the provisions you need to be able to go ahead. And, and it's almost to the point about what enemies? What is it? I thought they were big. I thought I could never, um, I, 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 I looked at them as bigger than all of my problems. I looked at them and uh, uh, bigger than God and bigger than anything. But here he's saying you can sit down beside them and not even worry. You can sit down and be blessed by me. You can taste uh, 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 the food of my table. You can be anointed with the oil. And it's, it's, it's that special blessing that God can put over us. And he says, my cup runs over. It's not your cup that runs over. It's his cup that runs over. With the goodness of life, with the blessings from him that can lift us up and put us back. He says, surely... Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 6, in my opinion, 
is kind of the key here. That last, that last bit of phrase here. And he says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Where do you want to live in your life? Where do you want to dwell? Do you, do you want to stay the opposite of what God, what, what David sees that God can provide in your life here? I mean, it's a sh six short verses of just showing us how God can lead us through our life and how he can provide through our life. But we can easily forget it. We can easily look at the enemy and lose sight of what God can do. We can look at them and focus on them and forget that we're sitting at the finest table ever provided, ever put together. Having our heads anointed with oil in a way that we see the blessing of God. And the, the oil they're talking about is, is the expensive oil. Like the oil that was uh, poured over Jesus' feet, the, the spikenard that was so, uh, the aroma was just so uh, uh, unique that you could tell that this was a very expensive, very fragrant thing. And it was a blessing. It was a, it was a, 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 a huge offering uh, to someone. But this is saying you are that special that the, that, you are such a blessing and such an important fact to God that you're, you can receive the best. Sometimes we think we, we have to do all these little things to earn God's favor. You know, the shepherd provides his best service for his sheep because he cares. God cares for you. He cares for us. Amen. And to live that is very difficult sometimes because it's not always easy to see the green pastures to lie down in. It's not always easy to go to them, to work in them, the waters, to taste it, to see how good and refreshing it is and how calming it is, how restoring properties that God can give us in our life to build us back up. Sometimes living in the brokenness, we feel like that's all I deserve. That's all I get. You can get out of that by trusting in the Lord and wanting to dwell with him forever. Making that commitment with God that I love you, I listen to you, and I want you in my life. And I want that relationship, that everlasting relationship. And I want to build on that every day. I want to live in this house. I don't want to, I don't want to be in this place and just visit for a minute. I want to be encouraged by the shepherd and just, just look at him once in a while. Know that God is there to lead you and protect you. Some of our biggest issues in our Christian life is forgetting the fear of the Lord. Here it says in verse 4, I walk through the valley of shadow of death, but I'll fear no evil because you are with me. God is with me. But the one thing that we do need to have fear of is God. A reverent, respectful fear that puts us in a place where we don't want to go against him. Amen. We serve a loving God that says if we would just believe and confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Such a great promise. But after that, we need to honor him and fear him and remember what he did for us on the cross, what he provided for us, and have that reverent fear that we should not want to go against that love and that commitment that he did for us. We forget that fear of God. We do fall. And I just pray that we can look 
to this house of the Lord. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about being in the house of the Lord, being in the presence of the Lord, living with the Lord, being our shepherd forever. If we just humble ourselves before him and ask, he will, he will guide us and he will provide for us. So many times, you, you want to be helped, you want to be lifted up, you go through the book of Psalm and you'll be able to read all the different uh, ups and downs, the highs and lows in life, but the common thread through the book of Psalm is how good God is and how forgiving he is and how uplifting in he is, how powerful, more powerful than anything that we've ever faced. Everything, he's more eye-opening for us than anything we've ever seen. He can help us to hear the right things. He can help us go to the right places and do the right things. But there is a part of our life that is in conflict with sin and with God, our relationship with God. And I'm telling you, you go through the book of Psalm and read. Have that as some of your reading uh, passages for a little while and just see. People have some real issues. But God has some real answers. That's the benefit. He didn't leave us with just problems and look at what this guy did. He, there's wars, there's battles that these they, they fought and, and been through, and there's uh, whole nations that are crumbling and falling apart because they can't see God. And, in a, in a, in, in, and you read a few verses after that, and you see how God just steps in and wakes them all up. Boom, hey, let's see what he can do. And it's actually kind of a, a, a fun book to read after you get in there. I know Psalm 119, I've told this before, but Psalm 119 was one of the books I never, ever wanted to hear those words come out, especially in, in certain, certain areas of my life. Because I remember Psalm 119 used to be the book or, or the, the chapter in Psalm that I would have to write out by hand. Longest chapter in the Bible, but I'd have to write it out by hand. And I'd sit there and I'd be a little grumpy about it. But I can sit there and I, I I love Psalm 119 now because when I need a little encouragement, when I need a little reminder, when I need to sit down, I go back to Psalm 119. And it Verse 1, I'm just going to take a little ex excerpt out of this. But it says, Who walk in the law of the Lord. Now I know we live under a time of grace, but there is a time where, where law is very helpful. And you walk in the law of the Lord. And blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. I got in trouble a lot. Because I didn't seek God with my whole heart. I had parents that tried to help me see that. I sit down and write this. Sit down and read it. You let these words work into you. See how much you need God. See how beautiful God becomes to, comes to you by seeing these words come to life in your life. Sometimes we forget reading the Bible can be a really exciting and beneficial thing to us instead of just something we do in the morning to do our devotion. Let it be real to you. Let it be something that speaks to you. Take these verses. Sometimes they're very familiar. Sometimes they're something that they just trigger something in your youth or something that's blessed you in times past. Let God work in your life. Let him, his word come alive in you. And just see how good God can be and where he can take you. I hope all of us can say we want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We want to dwell in his presence. And if you got to pray and forgive, if you got to pray and ask, he's the shepherd. He'll guide you and help you. And he's not going to go home. He's not going to quit. He's not going to leave you stranded. We got the parable of the 99, you know, 99 sheep came in 
that's good. I got 99, but I'm supposed to have 100. What happens? It's the end of the day. It's the end of a journey. Whether it was hot or cold, you probably didn't have enough to eat. Probably something in there you could grab. You could just walk in there and grab it. You could do this or that. No, we got to find that other one. The sign of a good shepherd. Bring the other ones home. One strayed. Let's go get him. He'll bring them back. And he'll give them that time to bond and to learn and to grow. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for loving us, for giving us your word. Lord, for the reminder of a, of a passage we all well know, that you are a shepherd and you want to guide us and provide for us. Lord, from the, the times of rest and the time of remembrance of you and just reflecting and time meditating, Lord, being shown the direction you have in our life, Lord, to the times where we're at our lowest and we, we need help from you not to, not to let these, this, the lowness, low parts of our, in our life guide us, but, Lord, to learn that from you is uh, the fear that we're supposed to have in you is not the same fear that we, can ha that we have in man. Lord, help us to respect and honor you and look to you always. Lord, forgive us where we failed you. Lord, show us where we need to work for you. And we just thank you for helping us and guiding us in our life. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right. We thank you that we're joining us online. Hope you all have a, a, a safe evening as this storm rolls through. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.